Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Hopefully what you've seen by now on this channel is it's not just me. It is lots of folks and lot with a lot of expertise that I don't have. And that includes Millennial Mike, who has come back to us to help me understand how millennials think about money, what they're doing with their hard earned dollars, whether it be crypto or NFTs or all of these other things. So Mike, thank you very much for coming back to the show and being one of my experts. Thanks, bud. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me on. Awesome, man. So one of the first things I want to do in topic number one today is just talk about money. I see out there in the media, I see in my comments, almost a, I don't know, a, you're old, you're young, very kind of ageist interaction. Okay, boomer. Yeah, exactly. Okay, boomer. Okay, youngster or kid or however, you know, all these little digs that we throw at each other. But I want to sit back and appreciate and just understand, right? You came of age at becoming an adult in and around the Great Recession, right? which had to be eye-opening. Uh, and I mean, I know it was for me, and I was, I don't know, 35, 36. It was my second kind of event. So I was like, well, I've been here before. It's mm. going to suck, but we'll survive. But it seems to have brought about just different thoughts about money. And maybe I'm wrong, but when you, Mike, when you, you know, you're a millennial, uh, let's talk about that. What do, you, what do you think about money, cash, dollars, full faith in that, fiat currency? Because I think you just have a different mindset and, and let's start there. Right. So, I mean, obviously there's going to be some similarities between every generation. Every generation wants to make money, right? Mm -hmm. Every generation there's going to be groups of people who probably would love to try to find a quick and easy way if possible. I mean, there were certainly 150 years ago, a lot of people rushing to the gold mines, right? Just trying to pan gold out of the water, yeah. trying to make it rich quick. That's uh, that's not a new concept. Um, when you were growing up, you know, you're Gen X, even for the people who say, okay, boomer, Gen <laughs> exactly. X, <laughs> you know, um, you were coming of age at the same time computers and the internet were getting popular in the 90s and the early 2000s. And I'm sure that there was, I've read the quotes, oh, the internet won't be any more of an impact on the economy than the fax machine, right? It's a very famous quote. I can't remember who said that, mm -hmm. but I'd, I'd like to think that they probably have acknowledged they're wrong. Yeah, you would hope. Right. So to, if they're still alive. So to a certain degree, every generation wants to make money. Every generation has some new type of technological advances um, that maybe go mainstream and some that don't, or they fizzle out, or they just get replaced very quickly. You know, mm -hmm. eight tracks, CDs. See, the lifespan of a CD was very short, mm -hmm. but from when you went to actual tapes, CDs, and then everything went digital. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, really, it's a ten or fifteen years. So technology just comes and moves through. So, mm -hmm. how do millennials think about money? You're right when you say I turned eighteen in two thousand and eight, oh. right at the Great Recession. I graduated high school. I watched a lot of my friends go off to college and take in a lot of debt. I was like, you know, I don't really think this is a great idea. I had to move from Washington back to where I'm from in North Dakota just to get a job because wow. there was no jobs, you know. So and a lot of millennials watch their parents and their grandparents' 401ks, as you always say, become a 201k overnight through yeah. no fault of their own, just slashed right in half. So that created a bunch of um, animosity towards the stock market, distrust. Very popular movies have come out like um, – the big short, mm -hmm. uh, or even the Wolf of Wall Street, while it, yes, glamorizes the characters, but in reality, the message of the movie is, look, man, there's a lot of people who will rip you off and steal from you. Sharks. Exactly. So why would you go voluntarily swim with them? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can do it differently or do it better. Uh, but ultimately, like I first started with, I don't think that the desire to make money, to forge our own path forward, to contribute something new, and then, of course, everyone's desire to maybe I can get rich quick. That, that desire has not gone away. So we still think of money similarly, but we're just a lot more technologically uh, accepting of new things right. that we're like, sure, we'll jump on this bandwagon and try this and try that and see what works. I think that's a great place to go to, because again, when I think about my generation, Gen X, it was the computer. It was kind of sit. They were really big, right? I remember going into my first, one of my buddy's house who had the first Commodore. Uh, I remember, shoot, I remember getting an Atari with the little black joystick and red, <laughs> and red button, right? I've, I've seen them in pictures. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you're, you're so right, because that was our moment to get rich. And again, I knew, I mean, everybody wanted to write code mm -hmm. back when it was basic, right? Basic was the thing before right. HTML and, right. and all of that. And 
So you're right. So again, so, okay, you're coming, you become an adult in 08, Wall Street, Wall Street, at that moment, Wall Street created pain, right? Very simply said, Mm -hmm. right? Your understanding is Wall Street creates pain. You're seeing mom and dads, maybe not your mom and dad, but you're seeing friends, mom and dads potentially lose homes. Mm -hmm. Not a good time. You, you're, so you have a smartphone probably at 18. Uh, at 18, I did not. So, I mean, this was 2008. The iPhone, I think, launched in 08 or 09. So I didn't okay. get my first smartphone until like 2012. I was still just holding on to my little typey keyboard okay. thing. So. But you had a phone. So yes. Like, yes. yes. Cell phone versus computer, right? So a, right. a new interface. So that makes sense. When was the, because again, I'm, I'm loving this. It's just you're more trusting on new things. I like yes. it. So when, mm-hmm. so when this, I'm going to go to crypto first, because again, you're on your phones, uh, there, right? You, whether you're paying with dollars or you know Bitcoin or Ethereum or Doge or whatever, it really doesn't matter when you're putting in. You know, I'm going to buy X. Right. So, did, when you heard of crypto, was it again? Right, you're 18, 19, mm. 20 years old. Was crypto a currency, meaning you could buy and sell, or was it a store of value, or what, like gold, right, the yellow metal, or was it just your ticket to rich? To go so, back to your gold gold rush. When I first heard of cryptocurrency, I heard of it a lot uh, earlier than most people. It was invented in 2009, okay. but it was popular on the in the online poker industry and oh. online gaming. Um, and so, as the nerd that I was back then, I played a lot of World of Warcraft. You can see Halo on the wall behind me. Yeah. World of Warcraft is a very interesting game because millions and millions of people all share an online space together and interact with each other ongoing. You get on the game, you get off the game, but it's always constantly running. And within the game, there is a game currency. That mm-hmm. way to make the currency in that game takes your time. You have to spend time completing tasks, and that's how you make that digital currency. Well, what was interesting with World of Warcraft is people began not wanting to spend the time to earn it themselves. Mm-hmm. So what they would do is there would be people who would voluntarily make the money and then sell it for real dollars. They would go on eBay and say, hey, I'll give you this much in-game currency if you pay me this much real American dollars. So you could buy a currency. And this was one of the first known like uh, transactions for a digital asset, right? It had value because it represented a um, investment of time to get it. Got it. And so people could be like, you know what? I don't want to spend 10 days making this. I'll just pay somebody to do it for me and I can skip to the end. Mm. And the funny thing was, is for a while, the value of the in-game World of Warcraft currency was more stable and more valuable than the Venezuelan dollar. Oh, wow. Because for for a while, And believe yeah. it or not, there was articles about people logging into this game, changing their dollars for in-game currency because it would fight inflation in Venezuela, right? Now, cryptocurrency took that mainstream. Now, I heard about it early on when all this was going on, but the first time I ever actually decided to buy it because I believed not only did I do the research and not only did I believe it would actually had staying power was in 2017. Mm-hmm. And that was its first mainstream media all-time high when it hit $20,000. That was in the year of 2017. That's okay. 2017 was the year I got into it. All right. So again, you say got into it. I'm guessing Bitcoin? Started buying. Yeah, no, Bitcoin. With- Okay. Bitcoin. Yep. And that's when I bought some. So when I say crypto, crypto is not Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is it's like all fingers. Exactly. Whatever, Cri- right? Yeah. Right. So if you say fiat currency, that could refer to the peso, the yen, the dollar, the Canadian dollar. Right. But obviously okay. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, but cryptocurrency refers to all cryptocurrencies. Got it. So let's talk about, so again, you bought Bitcoin. We'll just say the price was 20 grand. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, you bought it at at least a peak. Right? Yes, it, it got yes. painful from there. Oh yeah, yes. What so happened? yeah, so um, but I didn't actually buy it at the peak. It, it, in in the year 2017, it went from like 300 bucks in value mm-hmm. to 20,000 in a single year. And it, the reason was the same thing that any overhyped stock starts to go crazy yeah. as it gains traction in the media and it brings online more users, more people hoping to get rich quick. That's going to shoot the value up. One of the very unique things about cryptocurrency is it's a fixed amount. Unlike our dollar, mm-hmm. where we can print six trillion in a year, that exactly brr, there goes the money printer, <laughs> and uh, it, it's fixed. So there's only a certain amount of them out there. And what's right. even more interesting is no one knew it had value ten years ago. So millions of them have been lost, just thrown away on computers, right? So there's yeah. a fixed value of them. Yeah. 
or fixed amount of them. Um, so I buy, I, I research the technology behind Bitcoin, which is why I decided to buy it. I, and I told all my friends who asked me about it, we are looking at something that is going to be as impactful as the computer. And if you had gone back to the 1970s mm -hmm. and try to explain to someone why a computer or a smartphone was mm -hmm. going to impact their lives, they would have told you, dude, I've already got a phone on my house yeah. and I've got the yellow pages right here. Yeah. Why, why do I, why do I need a smart? I can watch my TV. Yeah. But what if we put it all on one device you could take with you? Now that's never going to catch on. Nobody wants to do that. People enjoy their free time. We have newspapers to read the news, you know, mm -hmm. and it would, there would be people who'd be like, wow, I think you're right. I think this will catch on. And there'd be other people who would say, nah, we've already got all that. No one's going to use it. And when I looked at blockchain technology and all of the various applications of it to include things like NFTs, I was like, wait a minute, this is going to go mainstream at some point. Maybe it's not Bitcoin, but blockchain technology is amazing. All right. So, okay. So it's 2017. You do the research on the technology, which I'm glad you got to, which is blockchain, not Bitcoin. Bitcoin's, right. Is Bitcoin a technology or is it just a Bit, unit? Well, Bitcoin, all these cryptocurrencies have their own blockchain. So Bitcoin used, the, I guess blockchain was technically invented in like the 90s, but no one did anything with it for like 20 years until Satoshi Nakamoto decided to use it to create a cryptocurrency. Got Explaining it. what blockchain is is a little bit difficult, but I can do it. Okay. I brought visual aids. Yeah. Um, uh, essentially, do you want me to explain it? Yeah, go for it. Let's do okay. it. Okay. All right. So essentially, what blockchain is, is this right here, this represents, let's call it a file. Okay. And this file right here contains the entire uh, entirety of the blockchain as it stands right now. It also contains a copy of the previous version of the blockchain. The Bitcoin blockchain is updated every 10 minutes. What changes from this one to this one is transactions. So this one contains all the history of all Bitcoin today. And then when we start buying and selling and exchanging, those transactions create a little mark like this on the blockchain. And now this one is different from the original blockchain. You can see this one obviously is different. This was the first one. Here's the second one that shows some transactions have happened. Mm -hmm. And then 10 minutes later, a new version is created. I know it's not yellow, but pretend it is. A new version is created that has a copy of this one in it. Yeah. And then now records all uh, transactions that occurred in this segment of 10 minutes. So every right. 10 minutes, the blockchain updates. And so you literally get a chain of blocks like this that just go on forever. What's interesting about it is that instead of it being centrally located on like one server where it could be hacked or changed or altered, anybody who downloads the uh, software to run and essentially mine, that's what mining is, mining cryptocurrency, they create for themselves a copy of the blockchain. And why that is interesting is when I have my chain and you have your chain, if somebody hacks into my local one and tries to alter it or damage it, at the 10 minute mark when the blockchain recycles, it compares this to every other version of the blockchain out there. And the rest of them say, no, wait a minute, this doesn't add up. Something's happened here and it will reset this one to make it whole again and fix oh. it. That's why it's unhackable because the only way to hack it would be to hack 50% of all users for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But there's millions and millions on different computers, devices, phones, all across the world, platforms, operating systems. You can't do a hack that big. So that's why I will call it as close to unhackable as possible. That's where the value is. It's, it's truly like a lock tight technology, which is impossible for programming. That's why it's valuable. All right. So that's the technology and that right. technology, I agree, has seemingly endless applications. I think of what I talk about all the day, real estate, and think about title companies as an example. Exactly. That is eventually going the, the way of the yes. dodo bird, right? A hundred percent. Title in real estate will be done differently. Pick your time frame, five, 10 years, whatever it is. Mm. So I, I agree. Blockchain is, is game changing for right. identification of ownership, for transactions, all of that. And you saw this back in 17. So I, I, I researched it all back then. Yes. <laughs> all right. So, okay. Now, now you make your purchase, right? So mm. I'm guessing you didn't pay 20 grand for your. No, no. I bought as early as 13, 15 and $17,000. Okay. And I watched it go to 20 and then tank. All right, so let's talk about that for me because that's where I wanted to go to. Let's just say your average coin's 15 grand for, for, for shits and giggles. Mm. So now you turn around and it's all the way down to four. Right. And oh, by the way, you, you still now you're how old are you at that point? Uh, in 2017, it's 26. 
So now you're eight years since the Great Recession. Why aren't you telling yourself, oh, great, this is just like last time. It's just these other people getting, I mean, why don't you look at it and say, oh, well, they, they got me again. <laughs> well, so the difference is here, um, it, a lot of people in my generation who began buying Bitcoin did exactly that. And they sold and they lost everything because they sold at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, me, I was never dumb enough to put any money I cared about in there in the first place. This ah. was prior to me buying my first rental property, but I was still financially savvy and not the type of person who just made dumb investments. So I only put in, I was putting in 50 to 100 bucks a month. That's it. Money okay. that if I lost, I didn't care. I was not emotionally attached to it. So, you know, I only invested around a thousand dollars or I had a value of about a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. Not very much. Oh, that's another interesting thing. You don't have to buy the full $30,000 coin. You can buy all the way down to one millionth of a Bitcoin, tiny, tiny fractional amounts of it. Yeah, called a Satoshi. Satoshi is the smallest uh, fractional yes. amount of it. Well done. Well done. <laughs> boomer. No. Well, you're not even a boomer. You're, no. you're Gen X. <laughs> Anyways, so I, I wasn't, you know, I was dipping my toes in because I was like, look, I, I'm interested in this. I think it's going to go somewhere. I mean, it could 10x, but I'm not the kind of guy who's going to throw, I'm not going to put it all on black, right? Right. So I just, okay. I put some in there and when it crashed, I diamond handed it because I didn't care. And I, but, I firmly did believe. did you buy more? Did I you did. Buy oh. I, bought, I bought the whole way down awesome. because I believed that much in the technology. If you really research the technology, okay. it's like looking at a smartphone in the 70s and saying, at some point, this will be big. So I believed it. And again, I didn't buy a ton. No, but you were 100 bucks here or there, all the way down, dollar cost averaging to even when it hit $3,000 a coin. Uh, now, that, now that is much respect. Okay, I like it. All right, so obviously from Bitcoin became a lot of other coins. And I think this is where you... I think this is where you lose the boomers, just to keep the analogy, right. is when you get 17 different colors of purple and some are blue and some are orange and some are clearly scams. Right. And, oh, we can't, and we can't figure out the difference. So we lump them all together as scams. It's garbage. It's garbage, right? We're not smart enough to know Wall Street's going to take our money again. This time it's just, it's not Wall Street. Now it's an 18 year old in a basement who's going to do a rug pull. It's going to burn everybody, <laughs> right? Pump and dump. Pump and dump. I mean, yep. same stuff we've dealt with. Like the dot com crash, just yep. throw a dot com and you're worth 100x and mm -hmm. bogus, bogus. So, when did you buy or have you bought a second coin? Because it sounds like, at least initially, it was all Bitcoin. I did. At the same time I was buying Bitcoin, I put some into Ethereum. Oh, you did? Okay. What I liked about it, so I researched my only concern with Bitcoin has ever been. Because no one knows who actually created it. Is it just, uh, is it, it, it's Satoshi Nakamoto. Is that a real person? He disappeared shortly after creating it and launching it. It's speculated he has millions of Bitcoins in his account, but no one's heard from him. He like made a tweet in 2010 and no one's heard from him since. Did the Chinese government disappear him? Who knows? Right. Um, so my only concern with Bitcoin is how do you update it? Technology has to be updated and changed and patches and things like that. So that's been my own. And there's been what's called a fork. Mm -hmm. which is sort of like when you split stocks, mm -hmm. um, but a little bit different. But that's why I like Ethereum. If The guy who created Ethereum, uh, Vitaly, Vit Vitalik Burian, uh, he's got a complicated Russian name, um, Vitaly Burian, I think, he is actively updating it and making sure that it can handle more transactions as it grows. You know, there's only a certain amount of transactions that can occur in one 10 minute segment. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it takes 10 minutes for that transaction to be approved how could you ever use Bitcoin at a store? You can't stand and check out for 10 minutes while you wait for it to be approved. Mm -hmm. you know. So that was my only concern with Bitcoin. So I was like, all right, I like the Ethereum blockchain also, which is the one that NFTs are based on, mm -hmm. because it has all of these new features and can also be updated and things like that. So I did also buy some Ethereum, though I have none right now. Okay. All right. So that's cool. So again, you did research. What I like about this conversation is your research. You just didn't listen to some stupid talking head on social media that talked about this coin or that coin or all these freaking right. movie stars and athletes going by my latest blah, blah, blah. Mm. So very cool. So, all right. So let's fast forward to 2022. Sure. What do you, what, what's going on now? Cause we've seen the one the, I'll just be honest. The one that kind of annoys me is Dogecoin. Yes, it should. Okay, good. It's, oh a, my God. it's a complete joke. Millennial, a uh, millennial said it's okay. It oh, is a hey. complete joke. So I researched, it, right? Because again, uh -huh. I'm like, hey, I put one, I put one percent of my net worth in crypto in November mm -hmm. of 20, so almost well, a year and a half. And I looked around, mm -hmm. and um, 
I looked at Dogecoin and it doesn't have a, didn't have a use case. It's got 5 billion new coins a month or a year or whatever craziness it is. No real team. Somebody named Billy created it. <laughs> I mean, there was nothing about this thing. And people are like change, running it up. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? So is that still true? Is that? Still- yeah. So Dogecoin, as you mentioned earlier, when people realized the hype behind uh, cryptocurrency, blockchain and Bitcoins, people started saying, you know, hey, I'm going to just create my own coin and I'm going to try to sell it. That's sort of the problem that we're seeing with NFTs. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's people who are trying to scam it. There are people who have legitimate, you know, hey, maybe I can do it better. Maybe I can do it, make it be- make a better version, more popular. Um, Dogecoin is a meme. Doge originally, like back in 2012, 2013, was a meme. If for people who don't know, it's like a it's like a one picture with a funny comment at the top and a funny comment at the bottom. A meme is just a, a joke. It's like a comic strip for the really old people who might have read The Far Side that you see back there, the old comic strip. That was like the birth of memes, just one panel pictures with a joke on it. That's kind of where what modern day memes are sort of based off of. Mm-hmm. Doge was just a, was just a popular meme at the time, and someone decided to make a cryptocurrency based off of it. But because so many millennials and so many Gen Zers and so many people were like, well, maybe, you know, it's going to go to the moon. And and everyone is always looking for that next cryptocurrency that will go from one one thousandth of a penny to a penny and they'll one thousand X their money. And so, hey, I could buy a million Dogecoin. Maybe it'll go to the moon. Well, sure is crap. It did, because if it just creates enough hype behind it and enough people have disposable income because we're printing stimulus checks left and right. Yeah. They'll dump it into stuff and ratchet the value up. And then Elon Musk, who was just making a joke, he wasn't like, you know, he's just trying to crack some jokes and be funny. But, you know, when you're the the, the tech overlord of the, the 20th century, you know, I mean, everybody's like, well, if Elon Musk supports Dogecoin, it's got to have some validity to it. Yeah. And then that yeah. pumps it through the roof. You know, Elon Musk never bought any Dogecoin. He did buy Bitcoin, but he never bought Dogecoin. He just made some jokes. Anyways. Unfortunately, it is a symptom of, as you mentioned earlier, the dot-com bubble burst. What happened to pets.com? Exactly. They are gone. Does that mean that all websites are failures? No. Amazon's still around, as well as every day we create more and more websites and things like that that are valuable internet companies. Um, But yes, are there going to be some that don't have actual value, but people hype up because it's a funny meme? And it just generates enough traffic because there's literally communities online of young people who are like, wow, we've made other people think there's value here. Let's Mm -hmm. see how long we can keep it going. And it's going. Yeah. So as we wrap up this first topic, this is kind of what I've always said. And I think if you were back on my channel, you would see I said it two years ago, even before I made an investment, before I put $1 up. One is I'm a believer in the technology behind crypto, which is called blockchain. Mm -hmm. I believe it will change things in many industries forever. Second, what I have said is I am not smart enough, nor have I the time or energy to research who will be the winner. Right. I don't know if the winner exists today mm-hmm. or if the winner hasn't even been created yet. Agreed. I don't know. So would you agree with both those statements? Yes. And so that's why I put it, it to this day. I only put money that I don't care about. Mm-hmm. I have taken that original money and I diamond handed it down. I watched it shoot back up and I, I buy it and it falls. I buy a little more. It grows. Never money. I'm not putting in anything that I am not perfectly okay with going to zero because the biggest problem facing all cryptocurrencies moving forward is it has yet to face government regulation and taxation. Mm-hmm. It's a big problem. I'm a, I'm a police officer. For those who don't know, it's a big problem in the criminal underground. It's being used because of the, the advantages mm-hmm. of it. Now, again, the internet was being used by criminals and that doesn't mean that it doesn't have validity, but it does mean there's going to be regulation mm-hmm. and tracking and all that stuff's going to affect value. Yeah, very cool. Well, you know what? You've talked about NFTs a bunch here. We are going to do that in video number two, because I got to tell you, I don't get it. <laughs> You're not going to be happy. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, uh, before I do that, Mike, how can uh, how can people follow you? So um, I, I'm on Mike's channel on a somewhat regular basis. So you can find me here. You can just Google or Instagram or YouTube Millennial Mike. If you send me a message, I always respond. And then my favorite place you can find me is within Michael Zuber's One Rental at a Time course. You can find me there. I'm one of the instructors. (laughs) Yes, you are. Absolutely. Thanks, buddy.